How you doing this morning? Is it too early for me to say Merry Christmas to you? Well, for some of you, it might be. We are in the uh, first week of Advent, and I know there are some people who believe that you know, Christmas needs to stay firmly within December. But to them, I say, bah humbug. Put up your tree, put up the lights. Let's celebrate, all right? Like, I really do believe that God has built us to celebrate things. I mean, if you look in the Old Testament, you look at how many feasts and festivals that they had that God said, this is, your, this is a time of celebration, this is a time of celebration, just over and over and over and continuously. So, I mean, I think what we have lost maybe a little bit is just that art of celebration, to really celebrate things and just like go all out because we're just, we're very reserved and woohoo, you know, kind of thing. But where's like that, I don't know, Anyways, my little pet peeve there. But celebrate. Let's celebrate this season because it is worth celebrating. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like, I need Christmas this year for what it reminds me of, for what it, it grows and builds within me. The reminder of where my hope, my joy, my peace, and love, where it comes from. So I think we, as believers, should lean into that especially hard. I mean, I'm huge about decoration. I mean, we decorated pretty early. I love it. Um, And I'm like, I'm limited by budget when it comes to putting lights on my house and the trees in my yard because it's like, I want more more lights. Anyways, um, moving on. How many of you guys decorated earlier than normal? No? No? Okay, how many of you have not decorated at all yet? Okay, all right. So if you have decorated, go help those people who haven't. (laughs) Send them some of your extra stuff, because you always got extra Christmas decorations, right? Like you pull out all your boxes and you still have more. Anyways, because you gotta have different colors for different, you know, trees and anyways. Today we are gonna be looking at peace specifically in our next month of building up to Christmas, Um, and we'll be looking at all the different aspects of what Jesus' birth means to us. And today we want to focus on peace, and, or not peace, hope. Sorry, my bad, I'm getting so confused. Oh, Lord. Hope. He's my only hope. Oh, praise Jesus for that. Um, So as I was thinking about this and preparing, I had to ask myself the question of like, hey, what is hope? What is hope? How would you define hope? Well, hope, typically, is a desire for something good in regards to the future, often. Something good to happen, something good to come. Now, I really hope that I can see my family this Christmas. You know, I also really hope that I can get a hot tub as a Christmas present. But I don't know for certain if either of those things are going to happen. I just kind of like would like that too. I have, you know, as some would say, wishful thinking. But there's something really awesome for us as believers, for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Our hope is not just wishful thinking. No, our hope has something that gives it quite the potency. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. We have faith, belief in Jesus Christ. And what does that do? That gives us confidence in what we hope for. We know it's a guarantee that it's gonna happen. We have assurance of what we do not yet see. We know, we know that we know. It's because of Jesus that we can have such a great hope and such confidence in our hope. So when we look at his life, when we look at why he came, what he did, what he said, things he promised, and we believe in Jesus, that ignites our hope. 
I like what John Piper says. He calls it a confident expectation. We are confidently expecting what Jesus said would come and what would happen. In 1 John 5, 13 and 15, it says this. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have before him, that whenever we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in regard to whatever we ask, then we know that we will have the request that we have asked from him. This is this assurance. Our hope is not just wishful thinking, it's a guarantee, something that we can hold on to tightly. So what is that hope in? What is that assurance of? 1 Peter 1, 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for it was by his great mercy he gave us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is, it's unto an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. And it is reserved in heaven for you, who by God's power are protected through faith for salvation that will be revealed in the last time. It is Jesus in his salvation that we have such great hope, that we have such great confidence and assurance. Because this world is broken, is it not? Because in order to have somebody who saves you, you have to be saved from something. And if Jesus is our salvation, what is he saving us from? He's saving us from this broken world. And I think pretty much anybody you talk to would agree with you. Yeah, there's stuff that's wrong in the world. <laughs> there's pain, hurt, abuse, many evils. I mean, we have a word for that. We call it sin. That's what we believe has broken this world is sin, which is basically just not following God's design, not meeting his standards. So yeah, typically everybody agrees that the world is broken and needs saving in some sense. But I guess the real question I want to ask you today is, do you need saving? When you look at your life, do you recognize that you personally need a savior. I think it's easy enough for us to like look out there and be like, oh yeah, they need a savior and they need a savior. You guys all need Jesus. But it gets a little bit more difficult when we start looking in and saying, okay, well, I think part of the problem is because I know that I'm, I'm prideful. I'm independent. I think I can do it on my own. But that is not the case. I love what Scripture teaches about this. Right in the beginning, in Genesis chapter 6, God says, every inclination of the heart of man is toward evil all the time. Romans 3, all have sinned and fallen short of God's standards. Psalm 14, there is no one who does good. Jeremiah 17, the heart is more deceitful than all else and desperately sick. Psalm 51, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. This isn't just for people out there. This is for me and this is for you. We need Jesus. In this moment and the next, we will continually need Jesus. We need him to save us from ourselves, from our sin. Now, you might ask, um, well, did Jesus really have to come to the earth and be born as a human and die on a cross in order for God to you know, give us forgiveness? Because, I mean, God is God, right? So like, he should be able just to be like, okay, everybody's forgiven, done deal. Woo, moving on. So why did Jesus actually have to come? Because he did. 
I mean, we see in the garden where Jesus is like, God, is there any other way? He's like, there's not. This is the only way. I like how Timothy Keller explains this. Uh, think about it like this, where you drive in your car, you get hit, you're in a car accident. Now your car is busted. The only way that your car will get fixed is if somebody pays for it. It's not gonna fix itself. And if you just ignore it, what happens? It gets worse. So I mean, there's a couple options. One, you pay for it. Two, the other person pays for it. Or three, you both kinda half pay for it, you know, to get it fixed. But there was damage done. And the damage has to be repaired. And the same thing with our sin. Our sin causes so much damage to ourselves and to other people. And it has to be repaired. But there's a cost. There's a price. So who's going to cover the repair? Who's going to cover that cost? But here's the thing. You can't fix it. You're not a mechanic. I mean, some of you are. I'm talking in the spiritual realm of things. You don't have the skill or the expertise or the know-how, let alone the bank account, to afford such an endeavor. You can't fix it. And it actually, it gets worse than that. We don't even think it's broken. We're like, ah, oh, it's fine. Got lights flashing all over your dash. Honestly, this is what my situation in my vehicle is at the moment. But I, I can explain all of them away. It's like, well, that one doesn't really matter. That's not important. Oh, I know how to do that. I just got to jiggle this thing. You know, we're all good. That, that works there. You know, this one, I got to keep an eye on it. If it gets to this, then it's, you know, an issue there. But we rationalize all this away. And then we get surprise then we wonder why when we end up broken down on the side of the road of life <laughs> those things were important jesus had to come there was no other way if you've ever ha helped somebody who is in need there is no way that you can help them at no cost to yourself as soon as you step into the situation there's a cost on yourself Jesus knew that cost when he stepped into our situation. He knew what the cost would be, and it was steep. But I think, for me, sometimes this is how I think about it. I mean, this is a positive spin on it, so maybe think about this negatively. I don't like coffee, um, so I think about it like buying a cup of coffee, which is not enjoyable to me. So, in this analogy, buying a cup of coffee is like sin. And Jesus pays for our cup of coffee. <laughs> and he pays for it, and he pays for it. And then we're like, ah, oh, Jesus paid for the last times. So I'm going to cover this at this time. We can't. We do not have the strength in and of ourselves. Jesus is the only one who could pay that price. Because the price God demanded was perfection. And perfect submission unto the Father. And Jesus did that, and we cannot. Jesus said this, John 14, six to seven, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Acts 4, 12, there is no other name under heaven by which you can be saved. I love John 10, nine, Jesus says, I am the door. That's pretty straightforward. But I think what we, we think about it is like, okay, Jesus, you know, I came to you, you know, I believe in you, you know, I'd call myself a Christian, but like now I'm gonna like pay for my sin. I'll, I'll do all the work and, you know, work it off. It's like, no, that's not the good news of Jesus is that he covers it, all of it. We can't. Our attempts, this is what Isaiah 64, 6 says about our attempts. We are all like one who is unclean. 
and all our so-called righteous acts are like dirty, bloody rags in your sight, Lord. It is only through Jesus that we can be saved that we have any hope at all. Because apart from him, we can do nothing. John 15, 5, Jesus says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. Because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. Man, just think about that for a month. Apart from Jesus, you can accomplish nothing. So our only hope is in Jesus. We can't save ourselves. It will always be Jesus. It will only ever be Jesus. It'll never stop being Jesus. And it's humbling. Yeah. Sometimes it hurts when it's like, okay, Lord, I'm coming back again. I'm sorry again, Lord. But when we understand this as it's a free gift that he offers to us, his grace is free. We don't do anything to earn it. What does that make us want to do? It makes us want to live as far away from sin as we possibly can. Not out of following the rules or because somebody told you to or because, you know, this will make me look really good to everybody else around me. No, that's not the reason. The reason is love. It's out of love for Jesus. Love is the most powerful motivator that there is. I mean, we see that's why Jesus came. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. But let's not forget verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, no, but that the world would be saved through him. Not to judge, but to save. I think that's partly why he came as a baby. You know, have you ever thought about that? It's like, okay, how did Jesus, how did God of this world enter into this world? He came as an innocent, young Jewish boy in a tiny little Israeli town 2,000 years ago. So thinking about when I had, you know, I didn't have the kids, but when we had kids, when my wife had the kids, when the baby's born, you want to hold them close. You want to just like stare into their eyes in awe and wonder and just like think about how did this happen? I mean, I know how it happened, but like how did God create this? You know, it's just, it's, it's amazing. You marvel at it. You want to get close. You want to tell people the story. Maybe not in the graphic detail of the story, but you want to tell them the birth story about how it came about while well, it was this time of day. And, you know, like our kids, they love to, like, hear the story about, it. okay, well, tell me my story again. You know, we tell us the same story to the kid again about what happened for them to be born. There's something special about just that little child. And I think that should tell us something about that's the way that God entered into this world. In a way that's like, I'm not here, you know, marching. That's how he's going to come the second time. He came as someone you can get close to, that you can hold, if you will. There's an intimacy there. There's a tenderness there, which is exactly what we see. He didn't come to judge. He came to save. I mean, I love the picture of, of Jesus in the, in the manger, was sucking his thumb or whatever. Like, it's just, it's something that you want to get close to. That's because God wants us to come close to him. He wants us to draw near. He didn't come to judge, but to save, to give us hope. Because, like I said, the next time he comes, it will not be in the same way. He'll come with a different, different purpose. He will come in his full power, strength, glory, and majesty. Scripture says that that will be a great and terrible day. Great for those who follow him. Terrible for those who do not. On that day, he will be our salvation. But it's interesting. Is that he is our salvation. He saves us currently, now, and to come. So how he saves us currently is that he frees us and he saves us from the bondage of sin. 
Sin no longer has to be our master. We have freedom from sin. I think often that I forget that sin is actually bondage and chains. It's not what God has designed for us. And we think, oh, I'm just, I'm being free. I can do whatever I want. That's the lie of the enemy because it's not freedom. It's chains. God's way is true freedom. But he saves us currently from this bondage to sin so that we can walk in victory. And man, like, when I was in high school, I didn't even think it was possible to walk in victory the way that God is walking me into victory now. It's like, I mean, I've got a long way, I've got a long way to go. But he has so much for us. But he also saves us to come. We have a now and future hope that on that day, when he returns, we can stand before him. And we can't claim anything of our own. All we can claim is Jesus. Man, I praise the Lord for that. This is what it says in Luke 21. It was read earlier in the service. Be on your guard so that your hearts are not weighed down, weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day will close upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will overtake all who live on the face of the earth. But stay alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that must happen and be able to stand before the Son of Man. Our only hope is Jesus. Our only hope of salvation is Jesus. Not only, it is a, not only is it a salvation from something, it's a salvation to something. This is the best part. Not only does he just save us from the bondage of sin, not only does he save us from the coming wrath, which is really what we deserve, he saves us from that, but he saves us to his glory and eternal life in a new earth and heaven joined together in perfection. A world that's not broken by sin. Man. Praise the Lord for his salvation. He saves us from death and destruction to everlasting life. From bondage and chains to freedom and the everlasting glory of God. Without Jesus, we have no hope. Without Jesus, there's no hope. But with Jesus, we have more hope than you could ever imagine. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you. And we come before you praising you for it is not of ourselves but it is only by your grace that we can be saved. So we thank you for Jesus that he came and he paid the price that I could never pay. He gave up his life but he rose in victory over death and sin to show us that that's what we can have now too, God. And we thank you and praise you so much for that. Lord, may your hope fill our hearts and our minds. May your spirit grow that within us to be a light that shines so bright in this dark land that our hope is certain our hope is a guarantee. And on that we stand firmly, declaring your praise and glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the pew in front of you, we have some Let's Connect cards. If you want to put down prayer requests on those or anything, you can put those on, drop them in the offering plates on your way out. We pray for those each week. Let's, let's do battle together as a church, all right, friends? If you got stuff that you want us to pray for or lift up, or even as you know, Annette was saying about fit, if you need help, we want to help together and do this as a body of believers. Um, we also, 
at the end of every service, uh, we have people that will be up at the front here to pray with you. And uh, I invite you, please take advantage of that. Um, I mean, whether it's praying for you or somebody you know or you know, whatever it might be, we want to support each other um, and not be so segregated and alone in this time of so much loneliness in our world. Um, I want to read one more verse um, before, before we go. Psalm 146. Do not trust in princes or in human beings who cannot deliver. And I say, hope in Jesus Christ, for he is your salvation. I pray the hope and love and joy and peace of Christ over you this week. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have a great day.